Hey peeps, and welcome to a very special ICH2 video. This video is two things. It's a winter special video, and it is also an anniversary video, because the channel is now five years old, so whilst I'm in this fifth year of videos, I'm going to be doing um, lots of really special videos to commemorate the channel being five years old. This is the first one of those, and it's been made possible thanks to my very good friend Gareth, who's also train mad, and he um, he sent me this as well. I, I, I will get to the train set, I promise, but I've got to go through this first, okay? This is a Hornby brochure, a Hornby catalogue, from 1986. <laughs> so that's quite a while ago now, I know, I don't need to be reminded. Um, but there's something very, very special about 1986. Because it's the year I got into trains. Okay? So that, it's like Back to the Future or something. You know, if I'd never gotten into the trains in that year, then there'd be no IC82, there'd be no videos, no Battle of the Shunters, no Engage project! And what kind of a world would that be? <laughs> so, this is very important, and this has been beautifully lent to me by Gareth. I really do appreciate it. He keeps these in immaculate condition. I think he's got every single year there is. Um, so if we open this up, just look at this. They, they don't make them like this anymore. Literally, they don't make them like this anymore. It's a real shame. There it is, folks. The Midnight Freight. That was my first ever train set, okay? Way back in 1986. I remember opening it for my birthday. It wasn't a Christmas present, it was a birthday present. I was four years old, and I was just wowed by how magical it was. It really was magical. I absolutely loved it. Um, we set up a little railway and everything. Uh, me and my dad did. It was fantastic. And just look at all the stuff you get. Look at all those accessories. Okay, the controller was pants. It, was, it really was rubbish. But, and, and the building was basic and that's pretty unrealistic. But, as a kid, you know, you love stuff like this. And look at the length of the train. Okay, I know the wagons don't match and so it's quite unrealistic. But it was fun. It was for kids. It got me hooked. I loved it. It got me hooked on trains. And, um, well, and model railways, I should say, because I was always interested in trains. But it got me into model railways, and then everything came from there. And just look at this catalogue. Look, there's, there's a high-speed train. It doesn't it just fill you with nostalgia and memories? Well, it does if you're around my sort of age. If you're younger, then you're probably just thinking, wow, I wish they make them, make them like this any, uh, these days. And they don't. Look. Country Local, Industrial Freights, Royal Rambler, and then I think it bursts into the locomotives. <sighs> wow, you can see why I like the LMS so much. I mean, just look how stunning these two pages are. I mean, isn't that just beautiful? Do excuse the plane that's going overhead. This is the fourth take, okay? I'm fed up of it. Um, there's an LNR Flying Scotsman, a classic. And look, there's like proper descriptions next to every loco. How amazing is that? You don't get that now. You just don't get that. The Hornby catalogues these days, they're rubbish compared to what they were like back in the 80s. I mean, look, that's a Midland compound and it says actual compound engines had high and low pressure cylinders to make the most efficient uses. You don't get any of that these days. You don't. This is, it's, it's just so nice. Oh, at Lancashire, Yorkshire. I've got that one as well. I always wonder what year it came from. It probably came from 86. So, this has been, as I say, it's been lent to me by Gareth. He's got all of them, and they're just fantastic, these catalogues are. So I just wanted to start the, the video with this. But I've got a little bit of a, oh, wow, look at that. Look how uniform they look. And look, it's a Class 58. That's the reason I'm so mad on the Class 58, because it's my first ever locomotive. And look at those. Class 86, a Class 47, HST, a Class 37 that looks like, yeah it is, yep. Yeah. <sighs> Stunning, absolutely beautiful isn't it? It's just so cool. Um, so yeah, the Midnight Freight, that was my first ever train set. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of a story now, a little bit, a little bit of a timeline to show you, uh, to explain to you how things um, turned out the way they are, basically. Um, so, here we go, pad of paper. And it's not a Sharpie! I know! It's not a Sharpie. Don't worry, I've not abandoned them, I've got loads, but this one's really cool as well. So it's, it's, it's got like a really nice brush nib, um, brush nib. 
a brush tip. So yeah, all right, I'll get on with it. <laughs> um, okay, so I was born in 1982. Uh, that's hence why the channel is Intercity82. There's still people to this day that don't make that connection. So yeah, that's when I was born. And then I got my first train set in 86, at four years old, and it was the Midnight Freight, which I've just shown you, which we'll come on to in a second. And then uh, we just started to make a railway, but you see, in 85, my baby brother was born. And so, Mum and Dad needed to move house. We needed a bigger house, so we moved house. And all the railway was dismantled. And then I kind of went off trains a little bit. And then in 89, 90, I got into trains again. And I was, got, I was bought a HST set. Um, but then in 93, we, um, we went on holiday. Look, I'm trying to draw a plane now through a viewfinder and it looks like a, a mad bird. Um, but basically, we went on holiday, and I was plain mad, okay? Uh, trains, they were gone, they were history. And then, all the way, right up to 2009, would you believe it? I mean, that's a long time. That was just mad on planes, 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 planes. In 2009, I bought, as you know, the uh, the Class 06 train set, the, oh gosh, I can't even remember what it's called now, the City Industrial, um, oh gosh, what was the train set called? Oh, it's just it's gone out of my head, but basically I bought that little train set with the Class 06 in, and that got me back into trains. It got me back into trains so quickly that in the same year, in because uh, we're talking about um, April at the moment, but in May, um, or June, I bought, I looked at, I looked up my first train set, the Midnight Freight, and I realised, I, I realised, I noticed that they were still making it, kind of, as a reissue. And here it is. Look, the Midnight Freight. But it's the Midnight Freight, not Midnight Freight. Remember, if we get out Gareth's railway catalogue from 1986, you can see that the two are ever so slightly different. Look, Midnight Freight, the Midnight Freight. And the locomotive is different, obviously. I mean, in 1986, you got a Class 58, because back then, that, that was the Class 66 of its day, people. It really was, okay? It was new, it was exciting. It, it turned out to be a little bit unreliable, because they had wheel slip problems. But it was iconic, because it was the first modular built locomotive. I really do like the look of them. In fact, a lot of people say that the Class 70 is kind of similar. And even the new one, the 68, is kind of similar as well. There's ones in America that are kind of similar. And the modular construction method is used for pretty much every locomotive in the world now. So it's very important, okay? And that's why I love it so much. Not just because it was my first one. But it's changed. In 2006, when this came out, and I bought it in 2009, they had replaced it with a Class 47. And look, you only get a handful of wagons. If I shunt the box over to this side, look, you get a crane, a few wagons, a very basic loop of track, and that's it. Look what you got in 1986. A massive rake of wagons, a car, heaps of track, enough for a, a loop and a half, a ramp, a loco shed, two sets of points, and some accessories, and of course your, um, your controller which was rubbish, admittedly. So you got way more back in the 80s. How annoying is that? These days, it's rubbish. But I bought it anyway. And this is one of the first train sets I got once I was back into the hobby. Um, and this Class 47, as basic as it is, it, it was, it's quite special because it's been DCC fitted. Craig drilled holes through the front and has fitted it with lights. I mean, the Class 47 that came in this box is one of the best locos we have. <laughs> it really, really is. So, this is the 2006 Midnight Freight. And, unfortunately, I have lost my original Midnight Freight box. My mum and dad didn't look after it, or it was thrown away when we moved house. I can't remember, but it, it, it didn't survive. Even though the loco did, and all of the rolling stock did. 
And then, in 2011 or 2012, whatever it was, I met Gareth. And Gareth has become such a good friend that he tracked one down for me. <laughs> Ta-da! Look at this, people. How awesome is this? Isn't this just incredible? Look, I mean, look at the two. So this is the Midnight Freight we've just got rid of, the 2006 one. I think it was 2006, something like that. And this is the 1986 Midnight Freight. Well, it might not. It might not be the 1986, it might be the 1987 or 1988. And the reason for that is, if I just lift the box off and take out these instructions, you can see, oh, well, I'll just leave them. No, I'll leave the box on for the moment. You can see all the rolling stock, okay? Now that's a class 58, and that's fine, that's realistic. A hopper wagon is realistic. A little car loader, yeah, kind of, just about. Uh, a, a goods wagon, yeah, that's fine. An oil tanker of some sort, that's fine as well. A mighty white van, no, that's not realistic. A uh, Texaco oil tanker, yes, that's fine, that's realistic. A uh, red arrows wagon, no, that's not realistic. And then we've got another ore wagon, and that's fine, that's realistic. But, you see, the thing is, these wagons would change. Sometimes they were Kit Kat wagons, sometimes they were KP Peanuts, and sometimes they were Mighty White. I got the KP Peanuts one. Way back in 86, I got the KP Peanuts one. There it is. Okay? You can see the rest are all the same. Okay? But um, I got the KP Peanuts, and I still have it to this day. In fact, I think there's a dead spider in it I trapped as a kid, because I was cruel like that. <laughs> Um, but this one, this particular issue, has got a mighty white one. And apart from that, it's identical. And something else I distinctly remember, it comes with a free cassette! Wow! How cool is that? You see, if we take the lid off, and then carefully put it to one side, look at all this stuff! Look, it's even got the original controller! Now, these controllers were rubbish, folks. I'm not joking, it's no exaggeration, they're absolutely pants. I mean, you basically have to just drag this thing to the left and right to make your train go. And it's, it just feels horrible, it's really heavy, it hurts your thumb to move it. Yeah, there's just nothing nice about that at all, basically. And the track, I ain't even gonna bother. There's no point. Look at it. Look how old and rusty and dirty it is. It's as good as useless, to be honest. However, you can make use of it. Um, you can make a very good use for old track, you know, is to basically put it onto your layout and make it disused. So like put lots of grass around it and just don't use it. That's one thing you can do with track like that. This track isn't going to change. I'm going to leave it in the box. In fact, I'll probably leave everything in the box. Um, I'm so grateful for Gareth, to Gareth for getting me this. It's, it's, just, it's just worth billions already. <laughs> And then look, even complete accessories. So they, here's the, um, the goods depot, or no, it's the local shed, yeah. Look, it's not even been assembled. Oh my gosh. I don't know if Gareth knows about this, but it's not even been assembled. You're supposed to cut these out and stick them on. I'm sure of it. <sighs> wow. Why did, whoever, who owned this? Like, um, Judith Chalmers, I mean, why, why hasn't she made it? Uh, you've got to assemble the, the, uh, the loco shed. What's the point? But whoever did have it, I'm glad they didn't. <laughs> because it means that it's probably worth more money and it's kind of special. Underneath this, which that goes into, that goes as, ah, right. Yeah, it's a goods one then. If it came with a little bit of platform, it means it's a goods one. The loco one had no platform at all. So yeah, it must be a good one, which makes sense, because it's a freight train. But look, now, to anyone born before 1999, this is a cassette, okay? You don't get these anymore. Well, you can if you look hard enough, but you won't find any music on them. This is an audio cassette, and this is something else Hornby used to do, and they could do it again. They could. Hornby, I know you're watching. I know you watch my videos. I know you're listening. Do something similar. What was so magical, folks, is that on one side, 
you had a guy talking you through how to set your railway up. He would tell you how, how to plug everything in, how to operate the train, uh, what to do if there was a problem. And then on the other side, sound effects and nothing else. Just beautiful sound effects of a train station. It, I remember putting it in my mum and dad's hi-fi and hitting play and then listening to the guy set everything, help me set everything up and then listen to the sound effects on the other side. I remember that. You don't get that now. The kids of today don't get that. But they could. You could do something similar. You could put a little bit, uh, USB stick in for us. A little memory card. Which we just whack in our computer or our tablet or whatever. You could make it downloadable. That's probably not as nice. But you could. They, they could do more. I know they could. Because this is really cool stuff. And look. I even have a cassette player to play it in. So if I just put that to one side, and you might be wondering, well, why do you have a cassette player? I have a cassette player for something else that comes from the 80s. Look, a Spectrum, <laughs> a ZX Spectrum with rubber keys, and a, a really powerful 3 megahertz processor or something like that. These are all stuff, th this is all stuff that we loved in the 80s, okay? This was the best stuff at the time, it was amazing. And the reason we have this is because it connects to this, and you can load up really old games on it, like Outrun, and Dizzy, and Chucky Egg, and Manic Miner, and stuff like that. So that's why we have a cassette player. But the beauty of the cassette player is that I can play this tape for you as well. There we go. Okay, hit play. Guys, look! Spools turning from side to side. Oh, and here it comes. Here it comes. No, I've never heard this. <laughs> no way! <laughs> okay, I won't play anymore. Just in case some silly thing on YouTube does flag it up as a copyright claim or whatever. You know what it's like. But how cool is that? As I say, side two is nothing but sound effects. And side one is a guy telling you how to set it all up. That's just incredible, isn't it? I absolutely love that. Ah, <sighs> so yeah. This is the Midnight Freight train set and it came with that cassette. It came with this loading ramp. And look! Oh my gosh, it's even got all of this as well. Oh my gosh, it's not been opened. Look. I thought that was like one of those zip things where you like pull it apart like a bag of crisps. But no, it's it's not been opened. Oh, oh no, hang on. Oh no, hang on. Well, do you know, actually, I, I still stand um, by my words. I don't think it has been opened. I think the bag would be more damaged than this if it had been opened. It does look like you can peel that tape off, open it up, and then take out these accessories and assemble them. Because basically, you've got a set of lights to go in there, and then a set of lights with a barrier that go in there, and then there's like a little hood. Where's that little hood? Oh! Oh, it's here! It's just off shot, look. There we go. You clip that in there like that. Yes. Very unrealistic, I know. Similar things did actually exist a long time ago, and back in those days, there, there was even something called, I think it was motor rail, where you could drive your car onto a train and actually end up on the other side of the country. Doesn't happen these days. It just doesn't. But back then, it did still happen. Just. So things like this, they were, they were um, based on things in reality. However, this is pretty unrealistic. You could make it look pretty cool. You could, but that's not the point. The point is that as a kid, this is incredible. You love it. It's just so much fun. I hope you agree. I'm sure you probably do. Um, so yeah, that's that. And look, the old power connecting clip. Oh gosh, now that is very bent. That definitely has been used. It's like whoever had this train set didn't bother with the accessories. Just set the track up and then ran the trains. 
Let's have a look at that class 58. I can't wait any longer. I want to have a look. Oh my gosh. And look. Oh, whoa. That uh, bogey, that entire bogey has just fallen out. Oh my gosh. Oh, no wonder. Look, it's missing a clip. Oh no, hang on. No, it is only one clip. Um, yeah, it's not supposed to be that loose. Okay, that's going to have to go to Crew Works. The other one, the other one seems okay, the other one seems fine. But look, it's even missing a buffer like mine. <laughs> what is it with the Class 58 buffers? They just always fall off. Well, one of them falls off. Ah, oh, it's so annoying. So yeah, th that bogey definitely isn't right. That's going to have to be fixed. But considering its age, folks, and you know, goodness, well, goodness knows what kind of life it's had. Um, what are the wheels like? Hey, that actually, those wheels aren't too bad. They look quite shiny. I don't know if the maybe the previous owner had cleaned it up before selling it or something. I really don't know. Oh my gosh, made in Great Britain. You do not see that very much these days. Definitely not. Um, I think the people of Britain are about the only thing made in Britain now. So that's the Class 58. And as I say, you get a HA hopper, a car transporter, a mineral wagon, a tanker, a goods van in whatever company decided to sponsor it at the time, another oil tanker, a Red Arrows one. I don't know why you got so many Red Arrows wagons. I really don't. But I tell you, I, it helped. It got me into the Red Arrows as well. I was so proud of this when I was little. Um, I even had a toy red arrow uh, made of plastic, which I tried to take apart and put inside. Mm. Um, so yeah, red arrow's wagon. And then, last but not least, uh, a little ore wagon, a little mineral one. And they're still going. They're still making these today. Are the wheels plastic? Yeah, the wheels were plastic then. Very rarely did you get metal ones. In fact, I don't think there's any, apart from the loco, I think they're all plastic, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Every single wheel is plastic apart from the loco. So at least that's good these days. The, the produ since production's moved to China, we get metal wheels a lot more now. Like 99% or something. But, um, yeah, back then in the 80s, plastic wheels everywhere. <laughs> uh, so there's the, there's the transformer. That's the controller, that's the massive cabling, the straight sections of track. Um, of course! I was going to say, where's the Transformer? Robots in disguise. Look, you didn't get one. This is basically your Transformer and your controller in one. Um, as far as I'm aware, basically you had to put a plug on. Look, it's just bare wire. You have to fit a plug yourself. I remember my dad having to do that. I think he nicked it off, the, off my mum's kettle or hairdryer or something, I can't remember. But yeah, you had to fit a plug yourself. They didn't come with plugs. Honestly, I remember now. It's all coming back to me. It's just unthinkable, isn't it, really? You just can't imagine it these days. But back then, you had to go and buy a plug and do it yourself. And hey, it's, it's no bad thing. It taught me how to wire a plug. I knew I know how to wire a plug safely and efficiently. You ask a kid like a kid of today if he knows how to do that, and I bet very few do. Of course, I hope my S eighty two viewers do because we're cool. But I bet most people won't. So there we have it, the class fifty eight train set. Thank you to Gareth for getting me this, uh, for tracking it down, um, and then giving it me for Christmas because it's just. I, I could cry. I could cry. You don't know how much this this means to me. This train set. Well, when you think about it, and the success of the YouTube channel, and how that's basically become a business, um, this train set changed my life. It it totally changed my life. I had no idea what was going to happen in the future at this point, but yeah. That's how amazing this all is. Um, I never went through the gump, did I? Um, let's just have a very, very quick look. Because we do usually go through that quite early, don't we? Hornby Railways. What's this? Welcome to the fastest looting world of Hornby Railways. It looks a little bit old. 
Uh, oh my gosh, look at Kershey on the Class 58. It's, oh, it's, I love it. You just don't see that these days. Class 58, Coco Diesel. I will love the Class 58. Do you know, I remember um, I used to go, as I say, I used to go to model railway clubs when I was little, but I stopped going because I got picked on. I got bullied for having a Class 58 because at the time they weren't getting a very good reputation because they were quite unreliable with the wheel slip. The models were fine, but um, I got bullied anyway, and it put me off going to clubs for life, okay? Uh, but I, I, I feel okay now, I'm fine, because the Class 58s are awesome. They're doing very well abroad in Europe, and I love them. Um, and that's never going to change. Look at this. Model Railways were the enthusiast. Oh my gosh. How old does this look? Oh wow, I've got instructions on how to set up a station and stuff. Go inside the building. Do you know, I really do wish that Hornby would go back to doing some of this sort of stuff again. Really, oh my gosh. Look, a list of, oh wow. A list of dealers. And look, folks, no websites or email addresses anywhere. Look at that. I wonder if any of these still exist. Oh my gosh. <laughs> How many times have I said that during this video? I, I, I do apologize. It's just a sign of the times, folks. Back then, you had no choice but to phone somebody up or write a letter. Or just pop along and go in. No emails. No emails, no internet, no Google, no MP3s, no iPods, no iPhones, no apps, nothing. But you know, we coped. We coped fine. In fact, we were very, very happy indeed. And I can't wait to set this up. But that's going to be the next video.